Which cyber threats, adversary groups, or malware matter most to my organization, and what can I do about it? Straightforward questions which have major implications for the direction of cybersecurity investment for organizations practicing the concept of threat-informed defense. But they aren't so straightforward to answer. The challenge in finding reliable and especially quick answers to these questions often prohibits security teams from building models of their threat landscape and using these threat models to continuously inform defensive priorities. Intuitive workflows from Control Validation Compass allow any security team, including cyber threat intelligence, detection engineering, and offensive security groups, to easily build basic cyber risk models and start operationalizing a security approach informed or even driven by relevant adversary intelligence more quickly. Quick side note as we get started, many fantastic talks and other resources inform development of Control Validation Compass and are linked on the site's Knowledge Center. But the single best summary of the threat modeling approach advanced by Control Compass and the outline for this walkthrough is laid out in Katie Nichols' 2020 ShmooCon talk seen here. If you're interested in getting started with cyber threat modeling, you should absolutely check out this presentation. A key first step in building a cyber risk model involves getting to know your organization itself. This step is often, understandably, overlooked when risk modeling is led by threat intelligence teams, which traditionally tend to focus more on identifying and tracking all of the cyber threats that exist in the modern landscape. Knowing your organization's underlying business objectives or mission helps security teams understand its long-term direction. Understanding long-term direction is crucial for forecasting potential investment or changes in headcount geographic locations, or physical or technological assets. These all may impact which threats target or otherwise impact the organization. This step can be accomplished as simply as looking at written or publicized mission statements. Leadership decisions or even public filings, such as Form 10-K financial filings, can provide greater detail. Next, security teams should know about their organization's assets and technology footprint and maintain awareness of potential technology transformations that may be underway or upcoming. What types of information and data does the organization handle? For example, PII versus PHI versus PCI, and which ones matter most? The latter question can be assessed by weighing data types and potential impacts of a compromise by the three facets of the CIA triad. Teams that are most successful with this step are the ones that excel at maintaining or making new connections with other teams, especially those in IT infrastructure who best know the ins and outs of the organization's technology footprint. Finally, security teams should have an understanding of which security controls exist in their environment and their organization's capabilities for collecting the data or event logs needed for those controls to function as expected. This typically involves knowing which security tools and technologies are in place. In large organizations, this can often be a long list, but also what security and response processes exist and what policies govern all of the above. This is where the Control Validation Compass Controls Lookup feature can save significant time and effort. It finally enables any team with awareness of their organization's security stack, not just security engineering, to get an initial sense of the policy and technical controls, detection rules, and even red team capabilities possibly in use in their environment. The feature should not replace an in-depth examination of an organization's control environment, but it enables users to instantly see the distribution of controls mapped to MITRE attack techniques that come out of the box or with the default configurations of the tools their organization uses. The next step in cyber risk model development involves understanding the threats that matter most to your organization. This is usually defined by the threats that will most likely affect you or will cause the greatest impact or harm to your organization. There are myriad cyber threat adversary groups and discrete malware and tools and attacker techniques in the global landscape today. For some metrics, Google tracks nearly 300 state-sponsored groups alone 
and there are now nearly 600 techniques and sub-techniques documented in Miter's enterprise attack matrix. Since virtually no private or even public organization has the resources to track every known and new threat at all times, prioritizing threats based on relevance, threat modeling, is a must. An attainable approach to cyber threat modeling involves breaking down the potentially immense threat landscape into roughly four more digestible chunks or categories. More mature organizations will often assign quantitative scoring, something as simple as a one to four scale, to these threat categories. The first and typically highest scored category involves direct threats to the organization. These are typically threats the organization knows they certainly care about, usually as a result of directly observing the threat, a suspected actor group or malware, for example, in real world incidents, usually via their telemetry or log data. The second category involves inferred threats to the organization, usually based on analysis of threats impacting organizations similar to your own, usually others within the same industry. Threats affecting immediate industry peers, organizations that most closely resemble one's own, may receive slightly higher scores. Privileged circle information sharing, such as through ISACs, is a key source that often informs this category of threats. Searching publicly reported incidents for threats affecting a given industry can also be valuable. The Control Validation Compass Threat Model feature shines in this area. Identifying validated cyber threat activity involving a given industry has traditionally been a labor-intensive task involving heavy use of manual keyword-based searches across news or vendor or agency reports. The Threat Model capability allows users to instantly surface relevant adversaries grouped into key categories relevant for intelligence analysis including attacker motivation and location, and victim industry and geography. All categories are based on human vetted linkages. The output, complete attack technique mappings associated with each adversary or entire categories, is even complemented with custom diamond model and attack heat map visuals. The feature aims to greatly lower the barrier to entry of cyber threat modeling, putting formerly advanced time and research intensive modeling workflows into the hands of anyone who can use the UI based tool, including CTI analysts, but also detection engineers or SOC, red or purple team operators. The final and typically lowest scored category involves opportunistic or indiscriminate threats threats that may impact an organization despite or regardless of any specific targeting or intent. This category should not be discarded entirely. There is often a limited sample of public re reporting on cyber threat activity, and a lack of reports involving your industry or peers should not automatically negate a particular threat from your model. Robust models will not only consider threats already linked to a given industry or motive via reporting, but any and all threats that may logically be relevant to your organization. Once you've gained a better understanding of your organization, technology environment, and security controls, and identified relevant threats, the final risk modeling step involves aligning your threat profile with your controls so that you can make better sense of your unique profile and start to take action based on it. Luckily, with Control Validation Compass, this step is incredibly easy, effortless and automatic in fact, because every resource included in the tool, both controls resources and every adversary profile is already mapped to the MITRE ATT&CK knowledge base. MITRE ATT&CK mapping is core to control validation compass, serving as the critical bridge between the internal controls and the external threat environments. From the control side, Control Validation Compass offers a unique collection of mappings and direct links to resources across nearly 30 publicly accessible repositories. These repositories, such as the Mitigations from MITRE ATT&CK, the Sigma repository, and Red Canary's Atomic Red Team, contain tens of thousands of control policy guidance resources, threat detection rules, and offensive security test scripts. Resource sets are included only if they contain mappings to attack techniques or sub-techniques. 
From the threat side, Control Compass leans on a unique threat data set that merges two existing powerhouse data sets, MITRE ATT&CK and the TIE CERTS Threat Actor Profiles, allowing users to surface hundreds of attack map TTP intelligence profiles organized around structured, human-vetted links to adversary categories such as motive, location, and victim industry. The controls and threat model features of Control Validation Compass are finally merged into a single risk model or threat alignment workflow, which reduces the potentially weeks or even months long task of building a risk model into literally seconds worth of work and a few clicks. Simply use the same options described before to build your threat model based on your industry or other factors of interest, toggle which security tools and resources are relevant to you to filter your results, and Control Compass outputs a rank ordered list of which adversary techniques are potentially most relevant to you or worth digging into further. Resort the list to reprioritize your unique TTP list based on which techniques have the most existing out of the box controls, which have the least, which is useful for gap identification, or which appeared most often in your threat model. This prioritization informs which techniques security teams should consider focusing on first, for example, by implementing new pre-configured detections that may not be in place, developing custom rules to fill existing detection gaps, or even deploying or developing new red team tests to perform the critical step of validating that detections are actually working as intended. Control Validation Compass allows any security team member to easily generate and visualize their unique list of techniques to prioritize, bringing a formerly advanced workflow into the hands of many and, and enabling more teams to start taking action on their intelligence-informed threat models. By making the process so fast, the tool also gives teams critical time back to begin the next steps of operationalizing new security controls, tuning or strengthening existing ones, and completing the feedback loop by validating they work as expected against the actual adversary techniques the organization is most likely to face.